I'm Kevin. And I'm Stacy. We have some exciting news. We are actually going to build a new cargo conversion camper. We are not getting rid of our cargo trailer camper, the rescue wagon, no worries. We are actually going to be doing this for and with somebody else. It is going to be different than what we've done. So we get to do some, some different things with this, this build. And another cool thing is we're gonna take you through the whole process, from the planning process, through every detail of what we do, so you can really have a better idea if you want to do this on your own. I was at the end of the road, I stopped to the dead end. The same old stories, got so tired of them. start planning for this cargo trailer conversion build but first we want to introduce you to who we're doing this with and it is our daughter and her husband hey i'm taylor i'm eric we're super excited and Let's... you can also check out their youtube channel eric and tay so we when we first got married we started camping we started with tent camping and then we moved to a pop-up and then we had a huge trailer and then a tiny trailer uh, but we recently bought a jeep and we decided that we really wanted to travel and be able to have our Jeep with us. Uh, but unfortunately, we had an R pod before, but our Jeep couldn't tow an R pod. We wanted something that we could pull with our Jeep to go out and still do all of our adventures. And one of the things that uh, we did was we let Taylor and Eric use the rescue wagon to make sure that that kind of a small confined space would be okay for what they want. It was a tight fit. We had uh, all three dogs in there with us, but we could also see the potential because with our different needs, with a slightly different layout, we really think we could make something work. The thing about it is, is with the, with the Jeeps, you just have to be so conscious about the weight. We're wanting to start doing some more off-roading and some dispersed camping and not having to pay so much for campsites and being able to go stay out in nature more than we can now. And Roxy, their 2007 Jeep, we used to pull the rescue wagon with her, so it, right around 2,000 pounds is adequate. Um, in, in the size, being it's a five by eight, you don't want something that's grabbing a bunch more air either. We're gonna try to stay within the five by eight to give us the most flexibility with what we can carry with it. All right, so the first thing we have to do when you are going to be thinking about doing a cargo trailer camper conversion is you have to start thinking about what are the most important things for you. So one of the things that's really important is being able to have easy access going in and out the door because of the dogs. Um, the next thing that we really need is floor space for the dogs because we do have three dogs. Uh, two of them are small and then we have a bigger one. Um, another priority is uh, workspace for me because I work remotely. So when we're going on extended trips, I need to be able to sit relatively comfortably. And then the last thing we want, we don't have a baby yet, but someday, eventually, we're going to want a baby and we're going to grow our family. And we want to have, since we're putting all the time into it now, we want to have that option. It's going to be like a clown car. We're all going to be <laughs> three dogs, two people, a baby, all coming out of this five by eight trailer. We're looking at a five by eight cargo trailer camper mm -hmm. with easy door access, maximizing floor space, having a space for work, and having a space for a baby. Um, so, and the toilet. Five by eight. And the toilet. Okay. okay. We haven't even gotten into the appliance must-haves. Okay. So, so we're gonna have to do some crafty planning. If you have some ideas as we're going through this, please comment below and let us know your ideas because this may take everyone's heads together <laughs> to put together the best fit for them. So our appliance must-haves are we need a fridge a toilet because I have anxiety about not being able to go to the bathroom at night. Some sort of a bassinet situation again for the... For a baby. As a, a piece of the baby space solution. So those are our clients must have. So that's all of the things that we need to have in there. And I think one of the things with the 5x8, we're also looking at a Vinos too because the Vinos adds that additional interior space into your um, into your actual interior room, but it's not part of the actual 5x8. 
that's additional space that's there. And an air conditioner. Yes, an air conditioner is the other appliance must have. This is new for us to share this whole planning process. We're used to doing the videos and just showing you how to do something. This you're seeing kind of inside of our heads a little as we talk through how to do it. You may find it terrible. I don't know. And those Maybe of you really those of you who have done projects before, you know how much mental stuff goes into it ahead of time and really planning for it. And those of you who haven't, um, when you start to get into a build, you realize you really have to think through so many different things and just kind of keep going over it. And when you can do a visual like a drawing or some additional things and have additional people give you suggestions, that's good. Because some, some suggestions you will not use, but some suggestions will be like, hey, that little piece of that's really good and that branches into something else and it really starts to help you with the whole design part of it because the design and the build are kind of directly sewn together. So what about shelving? Do you want any shelf space in it? Yes. I'm okay. Shelves specifically for pantry and possibly uh, clothes. <laughs> we want a twin bed. Um, we just decided that we're going to just stay really skinny forever. <laughs> we're just going to stay really thin. Um, but we want a bed too that's not just a twin, but it's a folding bed. Um, that so turn, that yeah, so the, the, the foot of the bed can, well, there, there are different solutions. We're, we're open to different versions of a folding twin bed, but one that hamburger is or not the full space. It's hamburger or hot dog. What is a hot dog? Like Skinny on one side. Yeah. So hamburger, thick. Thick bed in half, <laughs> hot dog, it's um, <laughs> What kind of storage space do you guys envision that you're going to need in this cargo trailer? So you guys use the thicker black and yellow tubs. We tend to use the longer, thinner tubs. Um, and we don't need quite as much storage underneath as you guys have, but we still need enough to fit um, like our essentials. And we're thinking that that storage will just be under the fixed twin bed. But one of the things I do know is that they tend to not have as much stuff with them as what we tend to bring. Just be mindful about how much stuff you want to bring with you. So that's going to really play into your design mm -hmm. because you have limited storage. You have to plan for the storage. It and doesn't it, happen. It goes away very quickly. Um, one solution too that we have eventually that we think we might want to do, we'll have, hopefully, we want to get a roof rack eventually. So for our paddle boards, for some of those things, we can have some storage up top, but for our everyday like things, the necessities, I want them to be able to fit into the trailer. We want at least two windows. Um, we don't, I know the rescue wagon has a window on the back. Uh, we don't necessarily, we're not thinking that we want a window on the back because I think if we're going to use that space, we'll just open it up. But we do want two on the side because we do not want it to be a cave in there. All right, we also in ours have netting across the shelves, which gives us also some little pockets there. Is netting something you're going to want to have? Yes. Yes. yes and we're also thinking, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but we're also thinking along the lines of netting, having, using, utilizing some of the wall space, especially where we're not gonna have the shelving because we're having a more open space when you walk in. Um, utilizing some of those, what do you call it? They screw into the wall and it's just the net on the wall. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, so like, almost like floating shelves kind like of. Basket. Yeah, yeah. Floating net yeah. shelves. Yeah. On the back of the door in the rescue wagon, we have show, like, uh, it's a shoe holder that holds all kinds of things on the back of the door. Is that yes. the thing? I already have a shoe I'd say that's ready. a must have. That's, that's the one thing I use all the time. Because one of the things in the cargo camper that we find is that the outside space is as much a part of your camper as the inside space because you're using that just like it's part of your camper. You spend a lot of time really maximizing your outdoor space. So what are some of the things that you want on the outside of your camper? One thing that we love is the um, the shelf that you have on the outside that just pops up. Uh, we find ourselves using that just at the house when we're doing outside projects. Um, we also really like the um, hot water, the, the water pump and hot water heater that you guys have installed in your camper. The ability to do the outside showers and have the hot water 
especially because we're going out west this summer and we were having to look and find places, especially when we were going with our R-Pod because we didn't have instant hot water. We didn't have a bunch of water. Like you have to bring in everything. And we were having to find places to shower and it's like $15 per person per shower. You might as well put one on your camper. A uh, generator. Is that something that you are going to want to have on the outside of it? Or are you going to carry it separately? Or so It would be ideal if we were able to have one outside. We already own a generator. Um, it's a little bit bigger than the one that Kevin and Stacy have set up for their rescue wagon. So there's a question of, is it feasible to mount it? It would be nice if we could. Right. We definitely want a generator we de we'll, because... We'll need one to carry with us to do more off the grid camping situations. But I don't think that we can, we can't bring it in the Jeep. We have no space we in the Jeep. We wouldn't have space to carry it in the Jeep. So it has to be mounted on the outside somewhere and we may have to downsize and get a smaller one. I don't know. What about your spare tire? Okay, we love, I like, I love on um, their rescue wagon how it's on the side. I just think that looks so cool. So I would really love to have a spare tire on the side. <laughs> Anything else on the outside of the rescue wagon that you thought of? Well, or for your, the uh, air conditioner solution, there's, um, you know, the rescue wagon has a one mounted in the roof, but um, the potential downsides of that is you don't have that roof space for um, like a roof rack because the air conditioner's up there. But since the air conditioner's up there, you have more space on your walls. So if we were to do an air conditioner on our wall to make space for a roof rack, we would have to have a very different arrangement for that portion of the wall. Cause I think your spare tire is near where we would need to put an air conditioner. One thing to think about as well when you're considering the cargo trailer camper, when you think about areas that you could potentially cut some costs, your air conditioner is going to be one of those areas depending on what your budget is. Because your roof mounted air conditioner is going to run you probably around... 1000 to 1500 depending on whether where you get it, what you get, and you know how you install it. Right, and, and you can do one of the side mount smaller air conditioners for much less. So it's gonna be a lot less expensive. Uh, it's just, it just depends on what you like and what your needs are. And it is a small area, so it's not like you have to have this big massive. We, we definitely have a big air conditioner for our space. We can hang meat. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and it's, uh, but it's good. I mean, yeah, I have to, I, I, have wouldn't, to <laughs> I wouldn't change it for us. It meets our needs, but these are some of the things you think about when you're building and you're going to do your own build is what meets your needs, what meets your budget. You're going to have to give and take that kind of thing. Okay. So our budget is $8,500 for everything. It's $1.2 million. And I'm a butterfly catcher. <laughs> oh wait, this is an HGTV. At point, we kind of have talked about all of the things and we are ready to move into laying it out. Okay. So now we're going to, uh, get into the more specific design. So Eric, why don't you take us through that? All right, so we've got some ideas here as to how we could lay it out. Um, this is just the first rough sketch that we did looking at you know, the approximate length. The twin bed is gonna take up a good bit of space. This is it when it's in its like extended mode. And we're thinking we'll do cabinets up on this side of the V-nose. Yeah, in this spot right here. And then you've got it if you wanted to keep your, if you didn't try to pull a mattress. Like, yeah, but you can't bring it in, just air hot mattress. So like... What that means is that we can collapse the bed up and have extra floor space when it's not time to sleep. All right, so today is shopping day. Shopping day for the new five by eight camper build that Eric and Kay are gonna do. We're gonna go with them and we're gonna help them find the uh, find their, their uh, trailer and uh, hopefully that's going to be the right one today. So there's a couple of things though that we definitely are looking for and that is first and foremost a 5x8 enclosed cargo trailer in black. They want it in black. We want, I know, a straight axle yep. for the tire situation. Also a V-nose for pulling just because it pulls less air and the 2007 Jeeps just don't pull a lot, so you gotta be careful with that. And we're also looking for one that has a door on the back as in a, as opposed to a ramp. We're here in 
uh, to the trailer place and we've got what we believe is an all aluminum frame six by 10 trailer. We're gonna go double check and see. It looks like it's got a straight axle with leaf springs that we could flip the leaf springs on the top to make it uh, a little higher. What we need to check on the weight and we also, which if it's all aluminum should be okay. Uh, it's a little bigger than we wanted to go, but it is a drop note. So we're gonna have to just get a little bit more information I have a feeling this one might be a bit more expensive than they're prepared for. So, something that you should know about Eric and I, um, we're on mom and dad's list right now because we didn't do adequate trailer hunting before we all got together. Story of our lives, it always happens. But, we are going right now. We found a couple on Facebook Marketplace. Again, I didn't do the full research. They looked terrible. Mom and dad were like, Taylor, what are you doing? So we found one though, not far from our house, about 20 minutes. It's a six, or say, six, yeah, six by 10, six by 10 uh, which is a little bit bigger, but explain why it's different. It has an aluminum frame instead of steel, so that helps it be lighter. And it already has the straight axle, which is what we're looking for in terms of being able to get bigger tires on and make it a little bit more rugged. Also, I think that helps raise it off the ground so that Roxy can attach to it and tow it better. But we're going to get Roxy right now because we cannot purchase something and then redo it all and then not be able to care to drive it. So the big thing with a bigger camper like that versus a five by eight, you've got more surface area. When you start pulling more wind, sometimes that can be more drastic than you think it is. And uh, just because you're rated to pull the weight doesn't mean that, um, you know, if you're pulling something that's easy and sleek, makes sense, goes through the air pretty good. The bigger it gets, the harder it is to pull it through the air. So we're gonna kinda, we're gonna try it empty. Obviously it won't be weighted down, but if you have resistance and it's empty and you can really feel it, it's not gonna work loaded down either. We're getting ready to head out and see how this thing pulls, make sure it's not pulling air. Uh, the camper place, they hooked us up with a four inch drop, which seemed to be uh, just about perfect for what we need right now. So we're gonna take her out and make sure that it, uh, it pulls nice and easy. New leaf, turn it over. New me, off the sofa. New day, getting closer. Yesterday, it was nice to know here. Yeah. New leaf. We took this out and it performed very, very well. So I think there's not, not gonna be any problem at all. We may see a little bit more when we add some weight to it, but uh, as far as actually pulling air, I think that light bar is actually pulling more air than I can feel coming off the camper. So we're here at uh, Camp Oaks RV and Aaron's helping us get an awesome deal on the six by 10 cargo trailer that we're gonna do our conversion on. So thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you guys. And uh, I hope your conversion goes well and we appreciate the business. And you know, if you need anything along the way, please let us know. Sure will. All right, awesome. Okay, so on the way over here, we talked about some things that we were definitely looking for when we went shopping. We were looking for a black cargo trailer. We were looking for a five by eight, a straight axle, and I think that well, those were the main things. And then we wanted the door on the back to open up in some capacity, not be a ramp, and then the V-nose. So we obviously got the black cargo trailer. Ding! When it comes to the size, we were looking for a five by eight. However, as you can see, it's a bit bigger than the rescue wagon. We ended up getting a they ended up getting a six by 10. And the reason it was possible was because it's aluminum rather than, than the steel frame. So it's lighter. In addition to that, we were looking for the straight axle. We ended up not with a straight axle. They're gonna be able to make some adjustments to that axle so it will be able to take the larger wheels and tires and be more off-road. Oh, the back door. We wanted a back door that swings open. They were able to get the barn doors checked. We got that. And then the Venos. As you can see, it has a Venos. The budget was $3,500 for the base trailer. So the trailer cost $5,200 total with tax. So we originally said $8,500. We're looking at $9,500. We are ready to go ahead and lay out the new layout for the six by 10 cargo trailer.
Doing stuff yourself, hanging out with your family, having fun, being creative allows you to be free. I got some cheese breath. <laughs>